Hi, and welcome to the live stream. I am Kendra Little from Redgate's DevOps Advocate Team, and today I am going to show an answer to a forum question. Now, I've asked some clarifying questions on the forum question, but I think I know what they're talking about. So I'm going to show one way to do this. The question is, how do I correctly create and include a SQL compare filter in a SQL change automation project to exclude both user and role schema objects? I'm at least able to create a file, but I'm not sure if it's correct, right? So we want to know, hey, uh, let's make sure it actually is excluding the users and the roles. And how do I uh, include it in the project to test? So let's go ahead and do that. So in order to demo this, I created an example database on my test instance. And you know, I've got a few databases over here. Let's just refresh here and we'll see if we can zoom in. This is just called uh, filter example is the <laughs> high tech name of my database. And in filter example, I just ran this code to create a role named do you see this role? And I created a user, do you see this user? I created a loginless user just because it's less code. So if I already have uh, an existing project where I've already baselined it, and I did go ahead and created a SQL change automation project named filter example, it was for an empty database, so I didn't really need to do much in terms of a baseline. It was like, hey, there's nothing in your database. I created these objects after I did that. And so now when I go in there and I go to this generate migrations tab, SQL change automation is like, oh yeah, you've got two objects, one is a role and one is a user, and I can import them. And if I click on them, I'll see that it, you know, sees the code for that role. They are not, you know, they are in the database. They are not currently in source control. So I want to filter these out so they don't get picked up. Now I would say like if, if you're testing a filter, you know, like does this really work? Does it keep new objects of these types from getting it picked up? I think the easiest way to do it is just to create a couple simple ones in your development database. We aren't going to commit these to source control. We're just going to make sure they don't generate migration scripts. And that's how we're going to help test the filter. So now to create a filter, I'm going to open SQL compare and in SQL compare, I am going to go ahead and save out my filter.scpf file. Now we do have a documentation page that walks you through this. So in our documentation, there's a filtering page on SQL change automation. If you prefer to step through that, I am basically doing what it says in here. And this is the document where it says um, you need to save this as a file named filter.scpf and it tells me where to save it. Right, so if you don't remember everything I show you, you can look it up in the docs page. All right, so to create the filter, now I have SQL compare open, I'm gonna say, hey, I wanna connect to my little demo database where I've created my two objects, you know, that are the types I wanna filter out. And this is the source over here. Now on the target side, I'm gonna say, I wanna compare this to a scripts folder. And <laughs> all right, I just like to do this. I uh, got this trip trick from uh, Arne, who's on our team. He's like, oh, you can just compare to an empty folder if you just want to see the scripts that are generated from the database. So I just have a folder on uh, that I just named the Jello folder and note that it says the folder's empty. You can make it an empty folder named anything you want. I don't know why I like to name it Jello. I just do. <laughs> so we are going to go ahead and compare our filter example database to the empty folder. And I haven't set any filters yet. So it says there's two objects that are only in filter.example. It sees our user and our role. Yes, I see them. I totally see them. So we want to filter these out. I have my filter pane open here on the left. We currently have zero objects filtered and I do not want roles in here or users. So the easiest way to filter these out, if I don't want any of them, I can just uncheck role and I can uncheck user. Now notice that that totally went away. The thing that we now have 14 objects filtered. We did filter out not only the two that were just in the database, but like some of those basic objects in there. So if I check off role again, notice that there's 23 of these that are these in the in the identical thing here, these are all the built-in things, right? I, I don't really care if those are filtered out. It's not gonna script them anyway. <laughs> so it's fine to me if I just, if I don't want any filters or any roles, 
you know, I'm going to go ahead and just let's, un we have user unchecked, now we have role unchecked, and I'm cool with that. So I'm going to go ahead and save my filter file. To save my filter file on the filter pane, there is a little save button there. So I'm going to go ahead, click save, and I've, I've done this before. When I did it before on the desktop, I named this exclude users and roles.scpf. That was just as a note to me for later on. If you want this to be automatically picked up in SQL change automation, what you do is you go into, I'm going into filter example. You need to go into the same folder where if I look at all files here, I want to be in the same folder where my SQL proj is. And I want to put a new file in here named, not, not the SQL proj file, I need to name it filter.scpf and then I can save it there. Once I have saved that file in that location, if I go back to SQL change automation, remember it was generating these before, if I refresh this now, hey, it doesn't see any changes to import at all. It has now filtered those out. So if I want to use that filter, I can save that there. Now, when I go to my version control tab, notice that I have done some changes here that I may want to commit to version control. The filter file, if I want others to also have that filter, it's important to get that into version control. I've also done some other changes in this database that I haven't put in version control as well. So just a super quick demo today of how these filters work. Let's go back to that documentation page again. So this is under developing databases and concepts. There is that filtering page there. So hope this helped. A uh, little quick demo on using filters with SQL change automation projects. I'll see y'all in another live stream soon. Bye folks.